So thank you um, to everybody for joining us this afternoon. Um, to anybody new to the um, sessions, welcome. Uh, we just kick off with a quick intro to our program, School Plates, um, and then that just lasts about 10 minutes, and then we'll hand over to Lisa, who will be cooking up some of our, her brand new recipes for us. So I'll get started. So thank you. I'm um, Colette Fox, and I am the head of programme at ProVeg UK. Um, for those of you that don't know us, we're part of a much bigger international organisation called ProVeg International. Um, we've got teams working across 10 countries, four continents, and our mission is to reduce the global consumption of animals by 50% by 2040. Um, and in the, we're gonna just, just to tell you who we work with, with school plates. So currently we're supporting 42 major catering partners that includes over 30 local authorities. And actually we're talking to about over another 30 so there's lots, um, lots of people that we're helping with school food. And currently that's over 5,300 schools that benefit from these menus and nearly um, 900,000 children will get there soon. So we, we're very experienced at all of this stuff with school food. So our aims of ProVeg School Plates are two things, to make school food healthier and to make it more sustainable. And we're doing this by trying to help you increase the uptake of the vegetarian dishes that you already have to get more plant-based really tasty dishes on there and to try and help cut down a bit of the meat in some of the meat dishes so um the the thing we're also finding is that this saves money um by buying kind of whole food plant-based ingredients they tend to be much cheaper than buying meat or dairy and also the this type of food is much more inclusive so if you've got children, which I'm sure you have, that have allergies and intolerances or children that um, are a particular faith or religion and need to eat a, a separate diet, this um, eating more plant based food is essentially much more inclusive and can hopefully save a bit of time in the kitchen, too. So the next thing to tell you is just that everything we do with school plates is evidence based. So we look at um, kind of all the leading evidence from places like the World Resources Institute, the World Health Organization. We've just put here the Climate Change Committee who advised the government on climate change. Um, and their recommendation to local authorities is to offer a fully plant based option every day and to ensure that staff are trained in vegan and vegetarian cooking. So unfortunately, this hasn't yet been made policy. However, it's something we can support you with on both of these things. And that's what we're going to start to begin to do today. Um, this next slide is just looking at the comparison of different types of dishes. So these are based on primary school portions. We review loads and loads of menus all the time, hundreds of menus. Um, so we've taken the most common meat-based dishes that we see, the most common vegetarian and some of our plant-based dishes. Um, we've just run the average of those of the CO2. And you can just see how much lower the plant-based is compared to even the veggie. So a one of our plant-based dishes is on average just over a quarter of the CO2 of a typical meat-based primary school meal. And just again, looking at comparisons, a spaghetti bolognese is something we actually, Lisa covered this last time. We have, we've got a new recipe, um, but we just, it's a recipe we see all the time. So we wanted to make a plant-based version and then just look at the difference. So we've taken, the only thing that's different is we've changed the 60 grams of beef mince for 30 grams of lentils and 30 grams of soya mince. So exactly the same quantities. And you'll see the plant-based version is nearly a third cheaper it's 87% lower in saturated fat. It's got more than double the fiber, which is really, really important and less than a third of the emissions. And on these kind of pretty small portions, you know, these are only primary school portions, you've still got 16 and 17 grams of protein in there. So still, you know, quite high protein given the portion size and very similar whether you use beef or whether you use plant protein. Um, and kind of leading on from that, obviously, health is really important. We've got an obesity crisis. Um, we're seeing children in England um, starting school, uh, reception age, 
Um, nearly a quarter of children that age are either obese or overweight. And by the time they get to age 10, that has risen to over a third of children. So it's a huge problem. And food is a, an excellent way to tackle that and help children to kind of maintain a healthy weight. Um, Plant-based food, because of all the fiber, it helps to also um, lower the risk of chronic diseases and it's just packed full of nutrients. We all know about eating the rainbow and we get loads of different nutrients from all the different colors that we eat. So it's a great way to make sure we're getting everything we need in our diets. Um, so in terms of what we can offer, apart from these um, online workshops, we've got two free resources. If you haven't got hold of those yet, please do download them from our website. We've got the, the, the guide on the right hand side, which talks you through the programme, why we're, we're doing all of this and how you can implement it. And then on the left, you've got the copy of the recipes. Um, the recipes Lisa's going to show you today are brand new. So they will be coming out in our second version at the end of the year but you've got 35 there already to get you started. Um, and then we just want to tell you quickly about our School Plates Awards, which we launched in January. Um, and these are just all of the actions that we recommend you take um, as part of School Plates put into a checklist. So you can just look at the list, go through and pick out the things that you feel able to do at the moment. And they're split into three categories. We've got nudging positive behaviors, so this is those kind of little nudges around language and positioning and what you call dishes. Um, we've got a section about meat reduction. So if you're reducing the meat content in some of your dishes. Um, and then we've got a section around plant based promotion. So that covers things like our training and putting more plant based dishes on your menus. Um, you can download the handbook for the awards. Um, again, that's all on our website. And I've just put this one up here to show you. So these are the six actions that you complete in order to get your bronze award. Um, I won't talk through them, but you'll see it's, it's very much the behavioral nudges here. And we've got the inclusion of having a, a meat free and fish free day every week. So lots of, um, we're finding lots of menus meet this and we've just yesterday announced our first bronze winners. So if you're interested in taking part, just send us in your menus and we will score them and give you some feedback on what's what you've got on there, what's good already and ways you can improve. Um, this is just a little plug for an, um, a podcast that we featured in. Um, uh, back in January so it's BBC Inside Science and it's all around vegetarian and plant-based school food and the impact it can have on um, helping us reach our climate targets so you've got lots of opinions in that it's really a nice rounded piece if you're interested in this topic which I'm assuming if you're here you are um, you've got head teachers and children and parents climate scientists um, it's all in there so it just gives you a really good introduction to this whole topic and those are our contact details. So do get in touch. Um, our website, proveg.com, you can download all of the materials and our contact details if you want to email us with any questions. Um, I will stop. I'm going to just quickly run through the recipes and then I'll hand over to Lisa. Um, so we've got four new recipes today. We have a smoky sausage pizza, a banana ketchup curry, a Creole style jambalaya and a banana split. Sounds delicious. I will hand over to our chef. Thank you so much, Killet. Hi everyone. And I hope you are having a lovely day today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lisa and as Colette said, I'm the chef trainer at ProVeg UK School Plates. And we go to different schools and we train the caterers in plant-based cooking. And it's always my favorite thing to do because we, I get to meet loads of people and usually I can pick up some recipes from um, yourselves and also show you the recipes that we create. So we're gonna start with a, a pizza. We know that children love pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? We all love pizza. Um, but you can actually make pizza quite healthy, relatively healthy compared to, say, a takeaway pizza. Also, we found that children, you know, they don't necessarily want a pizza because it's got, say, pepperoni on it. They just like pizza. So this one is a spicy sausage. Now, we're going to do a quick poll and um, ask you a quick question. We're gonna do that for every single uh, recipe. So um, whilst the poll goes up, I'm gonna plug, plug, plug my hob in 
and uh, get started. So just a few simple questions. So the and, question uh, is, have you used spelt flour? Yes. Have you? Well, I'm not answering myself. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough. Um, so what I've got here, so I'm going to start with my pizza base because that takes the longest, I think, to um, cook in this situation. So I'm just going to put it onto fry my old induction hob. So the answers are 28% yes, but only at home and 72% haven't um, used it yet. So hopefully this will be a bit of inspiration. Okay, so I keep um, going, I keep coming out on, to check my phone. Still on. Okay, so in here, I'm just warming up um, a little bit of oil in my pan. And in here, I've got onion, pepper, I've got red onion, brown onion, and some pepper chopped up quite finely so it uh, cooks quickly. And in it goes get that all in and then I'll tell you why I like spelt flour as well in a minute because um, that's quite um 72 percent haven't used it would you say Colette? yeah that's right so uh, yeah so hopefully you'll try some after this uh, workshop because it's a lovely flour so I'm just going to fry that off to make a really nice rich base and the good thing about a lovely tomato sauce base for a pizza is that you can actually um get loads of um, vegetables in. So we're going to be doing a seven vegetable tomato sauce, which you could swap out and use for this particular dish as well. I mean, a good tomato sauce can go so, on so many different things. So if you are making a batch, you could freeze some as well, um, which is what it's a good thing to do at home as well. So I'm going to fry that off. To that, I'm going to add some tomato paste. You want to cook your tomato paste out. Or it can be a little bit bitter, but you've got the sweetness of um, the tomatoes that are going to go in, the sweetness of the pepper, the sweetness of the red onion. I, um, red, I really like brown onions, it's got a lovely flavour, and I like red onions, it's got a sweetness. And also, it looks nice because we eat with our eyes. As do children, you want it to look attractive and colourful and fun. Okay, so that's cooking off. And then to that, I'm going to add some chopped tomatoes. I love the sizzle. So you can use fresh tomatoes, you can use tinned tomatoes. Um, I imagine you'd use tinned tomatoes for ease. Give it a little mix round. My pan's quite small, so I'm going to be using quite a few. So I'm only going to make a little bit of sauce. So mix that around. And to that, I'm also going to add um, some herbs. So I'm just going to look at my recipe. So I've got two teaspoons of sweet smoked paprika, two teaspoons of um, garlic granules, and one teaspoon of chili powder to give it um, a nice bit of flavor, lots of different flavors. And then to that, we're also going to add some sweet corn. Kids love sweet corn. Um, and also it's got that lovely color, it's got that lovely crunch. And the more vegetables we can get in, A, the more flavor, but also as we know, the more fiber. So this is a, a speedy pizza. So it's a really quick one to make. There's no fat thing. Just make a nice sauce. Going to let that cook down a bit. If it, um, what you could do when you're doing this in a work situation is you could add your stock to you so stop it getting too thick because it will reduce down. Which yeah, you get that lovely flavour, but then obviously you want it to um, last longer. So I've got uh, we've got the recipes obviously, so the recipe would have quite a bit of stock in it. So um, I'm going to let that cook down a bit. I'm going to move it over here carefully. I'm going to add a tiny bit of stock so it doesn't cook down too much. And give it a stir. So we're going to talk about the pizza base. Now, I know you can from your suppliers buy um, a packet. So you can buy it ready made with just add water. But if you uh, wanted to try it from scratch, it's so easy to make and it's really forgiving. So I'm going to turn that down 
let that do its thing. So spelt flour, so you can get it in most supermarkets, you can get it, um, I would imagine, from your supplies as well, depending who you uh, get your um, ingredients from. And it's an ancient grain, and it's got a little bit of a nutty flavour, and it's um, very good for you, it's a really good grain, and it's, it's like thousands and thousands of years old. So I've mixed bread flour with spelt flour, so 300 grams of bread flour to 200 grams of spelt flour, and you mix it in. Super simple, pinch of salt. Obviously, we weigh everything out and on the recipe, it's all um, adheres to the school food standards. We're very strict with that, obviously, so you don't have to worry about that. And to that, this is going to be a yeasted dough. So uh, I've just got some warm water and some um, fast action yeast. And I'm going to pour that in and give it a stir. So it's not like making a loaf of bread. Um, forgive me if you've made pizza dough, but I'm going to assume you, you haven't just for the purposes of this demonstration. So it's not like making bread where you have to have it really accurate. You, um, you can, it's, it's, it's forgiving. And there's no kneading as well. So again, easier. So you can do it in a machine, obviously the big stand mixers, no problem. I'm going to pour that in. So similar really is if you was out of a packet, you're just pouring flour into a bowl, except um, you're going to have a nice yeasted dough, which I always think tastes better. So I did try it with just water and flour without the yeast. And actually, I prefer it like this. Now, this mixture makes a brilliant flatbread. Uh, so really nice, it's a really nice flatbread uh, recipe as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, which I wouldn't normally do, I'm just going to put a little glove on just for time wise, because I don't want to be running over to the sink every two minutes. Let me turn that up a little bit more. So, the, obviously, the peppers and everything are going to cook again in the fridge, uh, in the fridge, that'd be weird, in the oven. So, for now, it's fine, it doesn't take too long. Okay, so I'm just getting my hand in there. And as I said, obviously, you can do this in a, a stand mixer if you've got one at work. Or if you're going to try this at home, which I hope you do. And you're just going to mix it round until it forms a dough. So you don't have to knead it for 10 minutes, nothing like that. You literally just mix, bring it together. If you've added a bit too much liquid, just flour your hands. It won't affect the recipe. And then what you're going to do then is you can, you, I like to put a little bit of oil on there, just cover my, cover it, um, my hand, cover the top of the oil, and then you pray, press a damp tea towel. And you can leave that for a good day. You can keep it in the fridge, you can keep it ambient. So, oh, one of my pressing books. Um, so I've got one here that I made this morning. So as you can see, it's going to come away and it's just going to, um, it's puffed up and now I'm just going to knock it back. So it has an odour proof like a bread would. So that means you can make it in the morning and if you're cooking it in the afternoon, baking it in the afternoon, that's still absolutely fine. So I'm going to roll that out. I might move my pizza chopping now. I'm going to unplug it as well because it's really noisy. I don't know if it's noisy for you, but it's really noisy. No, it's not noisy at all, actually. Oh, is it not? No, oh, not no, it's thing. Like really loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shouting because I think you can't hear me. So I've just got um, a lightly floured tray. Obviously, you can do it in a huge bake, a huge tray as well. So you make one massive pizza. And then I'm going to grab my something to roll it out on. I'm just going to lightly flour it. I'm not going to use all that recipe either, all that dough, because that will be too much. So I'm just going to use half of it. It's literally pulling it apart. And first of all, I like to just shape it with my hands, give myself a head start. If I've used enough. 
will be enough for me anyway. And then I'm going to um, roll it out. And this That's is just a, a cute really... little roller. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've actually got a huge one as well, but this one looked more appropriate. So I'm just trying to make it in the shape of my um, baking dish, my roasting tin. I'm doing this quite quickly because obviously time is of the essence. But again, it's a nice stretchy dough. And it's got the lovely flex of the spelt flour. And those lovely air bubbles because we use yeast, which just it makes it puff up a little bit. Okay, slightly informal. That'll do. And I will just shape it a little bit. So you can do this really quickly and easily, especially if you've got one of those big rolling pins and then you can lift it up and put it onto your big baking trays. She says. Oops, or is that going to be too? There you go. Just lay it on. Very impressive. <laughs> Tense moment there. <laughs> and then just shape it to the tray. And a little goes a long way. So you get a good yield from this. This will, this will, um, well, we've done it so it's for 10. All our recipes are for 10. So it's easy for you to double, triple, or tri you know, just makes it life a lot easier. Okay, I don't want to fat too much because I was, I like to make things perfect, but I know we haven't got the time. So, I'm going to put on some of my topping. I like to be quite generous. And I, like, I like to go as near to the ends as possible because I don't like it to be too dry near the crust. But again, as you can see, it's super quick. You've got all those lovely spices and flavours and vegetables, but no one's really particularly going to think, oh, I'm eating a vegetable pizza. It's just a nice, tasty pizza. Okay, so to that, I've got some sausages, which I've um, cooked, uh, sorry, I've uh, sliced thinly. So it um, looks a little bit like a pepperoni slice. But these are plant-based sausages. You can use any plant-based sausages, what the ones you normally use, or have a look, have a chat with your supplier, see what sausages. I mean, they're so good. I don't even think you know the difference, especially on a pizza. So um, if you've never tried them, even at home, I would they've, they've really come a long way from a few years ago. And there's so many different ones. So you can be really generous with these sausages and kids love sausages and these ones are particularly tasty this looks like a total winner with pizza sweet corn and sausages what child is yes. not going to want to eat this yes and so plant-based cheese all cheese um is high fat but however uh, we've adhered to the school food standards and also it tastes really nice and they like it so it's a, a better alternative and also it tastes brilliant. Again, the cheeses have come along such a long way. Um, I don't know if any of you tried any plant-based cheese, but um, back in the day, it used to be such a big thing. Oh, I couldn't, you know, eat plant-based food because I love cheese too much. Well, actually, the cheeses are pretty impressive. And I've tasted some pretty funky dairy cheeses in my time. And I've tasted some amazing plant-based cheese. That's just a bit about me. Right, I'm going to put this in the oven. And that's going to bake whilst I show you the next recipe. So I'll be one second. I'm just going to whack this in. And um, you can put the next poll up, Colette. Next poll, please. Yeah, we're going to do a nice curry. So, banana curry, everybody. Um, do you think children would like a banana ketchup curry? Because guess what? We've got one coming up. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> 
Any interesting facts about bananas that you want to share, Lisa? Funny you should say that, Colette, <laughs> because did you know it's National Banana Day? Which is a I complete accident. We didn't yeah. know it until about 10 minutes ago. I know, we can't pretend we planned, we planned it that well. So 23% um, think yes, children would like a banana ketchup curry. 23% think no, and 55% not sure. Right, Ooh. we will see if we can Ooh. convince it's, you. <laughs> it's controversial then. Controversial recipe coming up. Well, okay, well, I think that's good then. I think it's great. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna turn the hob back on, but before I do, um, I just wanna let you know about the banana bit in the curry. It actually doesn't taste the banana um, at all. You would not know it had banana in it, but what the banana does, is it thickens the sauce, it sweetens the sauce, and is also a really, it makes it creamy, and also is um, another way of getting fruit and more vegetables into the children in a really enjoyable, fun way. So um, I'm gonna start by frying off some onion as the base of lots of delicious recipes. A bit of onion, a bit of garlic. So I'll just turn my head on. And um, so with this one, again, I wanted to make it really easy because I know there's no point in doing not elaborate recipes. You haven't got the time. The children aren't going to enjoy them anyway. So it's kind of getting as much flavour and interesting dishes that can be done as easily as possible. So this one, uh, we've got onion, garlic granules, curry powder, tin tomatoes, vegetable stock, bananas, chickpeas, sweet potato, potato, cauliflower and brown rice. So a whole host of vegetables in there, but really tasty, um, really filling, and also you've got those lovely fragrant spices. And the, the humble banana, which 55% of you aren't sure about. So <laughs> with the banana, what I do is I squeeze it first, and I'm going to mash it, but it just makes it um, softer for me, makes it easier. And then you can use a ripe pink banana, or you can use this one, you can see it's slightly green, that's fine. Doesn't have to be overripe, doesn't have to be. But in it goes. And then I'm going to mash it. But as I said, I promise you, you won't taste banana in this recipe, but it does add a lot to it. You know, it really does make it taste good. And also, um, banana ketchup, it just sounds fun, doesn't it? Like children will be close, intrigued by it. But um, yeah, try it, make it at home, see what you think. So the, the bananas mash, but it will, it will also break down in the sauce as well. So I'm just going to fry this off. So again, we want to um, ensure that you cook out your onion, even though we're using uh, garlic, sorry, onion powder as well. So um, taking a look at my recipe. So I'm going to show you the slices. You put your curry powder, your sweet smoky frito, and the thing about using spices is they're really good for you as well. So you know we've been we've been told you know we're advised aren't we to eat a minimum of thirty different fruits and vegetables a week. You know your spices count towards that, and they have lots of um, health benefits, and they have a little read up. You know if you're interested um, about spices because they've been used for centuries for um, different types of things. Um, obviously, I can't make any medical claims, I'm not a doctor, but um, I believe that it's the, they do more than just taste good. So in there goes. And to that, I'm going to add my tin tomatoes. I might turn that down a bit. So again, as I said, another really simple recipe. Get ready for my mix that round. I'm going to add in my banana ketchup, sorry, my ketchup. So if you think about it, um, ketchup is really like tomatoes. It's like a puree, isn't it? It's just with all some spices some garlic. So, um, but again, it just gives it that little bit of extra familiar flavour, bit of sweetness. And um, it really adds to it, it's, it's lovely. That way. 
and I do love a curry as well. Uh, so we can add in our lovely spices. Again, another really quick dish. I'm going to add in some vegetable stock. And we're going to mix that round. I'm going to add in the banana. In it goes. I don't think I've ever had tomatoes and banana together until now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. Honestly, you won't taste the banana. <laughs> so I'm going to gently mix that round. Bring that to the boil. And it's going to start to simmer. And the banana just will break right down. Now to that, I'm going to add chickpeas. Chickpeas are brilliant. They pad out any dish. And, you know, they can, you can double the quantity of your dish by adding your chickpeas. You're also getting like, protein, fibre. You're just getting loads of goodness. They're so good for you. I have them every single day. Same. So with the, with the chunky vegetables, um, I pre-boiled them. So nice and quick, nice and easy. You can use frozen butternut squash, you can use frozen sweet potato. Uh, so you can just, you know, it can be, I, I prefer fresh, but frozen is equally as good. Just mix that round. Turn that up a little bit. Um, yeah, and then what else am I going to add? I think that's it for now. Yeah. So we're going to use a brown rice. Uh, brown rice um, is, is got some loads of health benefits as well as taste good as well. You don't, you don't, doesn't look like it's brown either, as in if, if the children, you know, don't want brown rice, you wouldn't, it goes light when it's cooked, but it's just got, a, I, I personally think it's got a better flavor and is better for you. So that is now going to cook down. And what I've got, I've got one that I made earlier, which I'm going to heat up. So I'm just going to put this away. Let that continue cooking. And then I'm going to heat up the one I've made so I can just dish it up for you. Um, Lisa, Catherine just asked, did you pre-cook the veg for speed? And the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah. exactly. So you can do all that. You can have it. Uh, yeah, presumably you could just have it raw as well and have a bit more stock and cook it in the in the sauce, whatever you've got time for. Use residual heat. Uh, say that again, Colette, sorry. No, I was just saying, presumably you could just use raw veg as well and it would cook in the sauce or you could have a bit more stock in. You could. I mean, potatoes, I would dice them then. Yeah, quite small. Yeah. Yeah. The sweet potato is fine. Uh, uh, the um, cauliflower is fine. It's only potatoes, really, that might. Yeah. yeah, we don't want raw potato. No, but you just, if you want to do it all in one, yeah, just chop them really small. But I just found it easy just to parboil them. Okay, so got my brown rice. I'm just going to serve up my tomato ketchup curry. I hope you're converted. <laughs> By seeing it's not like it's not as weird as uh, you th think it might be. Um, as I said, and I'll just say it one more a time to re reiterate: the the banana gives sweetness, um, obviously more vitamins and minerals, and um, thickens the sauce. So you've got a really lovely, rich, fragrant curry. It looks delicious. I love how you've done the rice and the nice plate and everything. It all looks really delicious. We've had a question, an interesting question. Um, so it says, in terms of where the ingredients are sourced from, shouldn't we encourage people to buy and source locally for the climate change aspect? So just in terms of using ingredients like bananas that aren't grown in the UK. So this is something, yeah, we get asked a lot. Um, actually, bananas are very low carbon because they come by 
they're shipped um, to the UK. So bananas are fine. In fact, there's a brilliant book all about um, this very topic called How Bad Are Bananas? And the answer is bananas aren't bad because everybody thinks bananas are um, a bad thing to have, but they're not. Things like tinned tomatoes and rice are actually probably higher in carbon um, than a banana. So it's it's more about where things, how things are traveling to get here if they're coming from overseas, if they're flown um, or if they come by road or by boat, they tend to be, they're fine. It's if they're flown that you add a lot of carbon um, emissions. I hope that answers that question. Thank and you. Lauren, sorry, Lauren says, are your recipes for 10 portions? Is If so, is that primary school? Yes, 10 portions and for primary. So you can kind of, uh, we, we will do the secondary size portions as well on this version of the book, um, which is kind of adding a little bit more. I hope that answers that too. Sorry, Lisa, go for it. No, no, it's fine. In fact, what would be good if we could have the poll question for the next uh, recipe, which is the jambalaya. Great stuff. So, have you ever tried jambalaya? And you've got the link to how bad are bananas that Kirsty's very kindly put in the chat. So if anybody's interested, do have a look. It's a brilliant book. I use it all the time. Um, yeah, it's really good. So 70% uh, have tried jambalaya. That's really good. And 30% will give it a try. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, nice. That's great. So a um, little bit about jambalaya, which you probably know because you've tried it. So it um, originates from Louisiana, allegedly, and has influences from Africa and Spain. Um, it's also inspired by um, Creole cooking. So ours, ours is going to be um, like that today. So our main seasoning is Cajun seasoning. Um, so Cajun seasoning, by the way, is brilliant because it's got paprika, garlic, onion, cumin, cayenne, chive, oregano, and basil. So it's got all those, um, it saves you buying it like individually, which, you know, for someone like me, I, I definitely have all, all of those things, but if you just want them mixed in, get yourself some Cajun seasoning, very nice. Um, so in this Cajun, um, sorry, in this uh, jambalaya, um, we're using butter beans because they're chunky, they've got good texture, and um, butter beans are brilliant beans. They're low in calories, um, they're low in fat, they contain protein, folate, they've got B vitamins as well. Um, essential uh, B vitamins obviously are essential vitamins for turning carbohydrates into energy. So um, all that in a little bean, amazing, love it. So, and they taste good, more importantly. Now I must remember we've got that pizza in the oven, so I don't want it to burn. <laughs> so I must not burn, must not burn pizza. So burn again, it, yeah, we're gonna start with um, onion, celery, pepper, carrots, which I've um, diced, and I'm gonna fry them off. Let me plug my, with help, I'll plug my hobbin. And um, so this is a like, versatile dish that you can um, swap out things uh, and th make it themed. So you can use obviously uh, different vegetables or you can use a different bean, kidney beans would work well. Or you could use uh, mixed beans. So in they go. Again, you've got all those lovely happy colors. And one of our um, one of our council catering partners has a jambalaya on their menu, don't they? Can you hear me, okay, Lisa? <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to no. Do don't worry. So I'm just no, saying to everybody. Really. I'm just saying to everyone else. One of our partners has a jambalaya, their own version, and it's one of their most popular plant based dishes. So we've decided, based on that, that we would do our version as well and spread that out to everybody. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a new hob, you see. I mean, this is the new hob, but I'm going to have to get the old hob back, but at least I can hear. So we're frying these off. They're going to cook, cook down for a long time, or not a long time, it's about 20 minutes. But I want to fry them off first, just quickly. 
can already smell how good that is. And as you see, the, again, the colours, you know, eat the rainbow. And so you see this, as I said, I've got celery, carrot, yellow peppers, garlic. Um, I'm going to add my seasoning. So I've got my Cajun spices, I've got um, some um, garlic granules as well, some sweet smoked paprika. So in that goes. Stir that around. Woo, and it smells spicy. To that, I am going to add a splash or a stop. Again, another easy recipe. All our recipes are, you know, user friendly, like I call it. Because, because we do visit schools and we see service. And we know you're cooking for hundreds and hundreds of children. And, you know, so there's, we do really think about what's going to help you. There's no point in us designing recipes that you just be look at it and go, no. So to that, I'm going to add tinned tomatoes. You obviously can use fresh, but I'm going to use tinned for ease. Store cupboard ingredients. Gently mix that in. And I know you can't smell, but it really smells good. Like the spices are lovely. Can you hear me, Lisa? I can. Okay, so we've just got a question from Mia. Hi, Mia. Um, who asked, would swapping the celery to leek be a good idea for schools? If they've got children that are allergic to celery, could you swap the celery for leek? Absolutely. And leeks actually lovely because it's got a really strong flavour, probably stronger than celery. So I think that would work perfectly. Or you could just use an onion as well. Yeah, you Brilliant. don't have to use the celery. And that's a really good point, actually. Um, but yeah, no problem whatsoever. Um, so to that, I'm going to pour in the brown rice. Love a one pot dish. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to mix that round. I'm going to pretend my hob's on. It's fine. Yeah, I do. Less washing up. And don't uh, just put it all in, whack it all in. Don't do forget it. the pizza, by the way. Don't forget the pizza. Right. Let me have a quick look. <laughs> Yeah, that is nearly done, so that's fine. Uh, to that, I'm going to add the super butter beans. Mm -hmm. Just absolute powerhouse of a bean. Mix that round. And then this is going to, um, you bring it to the boil, and then you simmer it for about 20, 25 minutes max. But what you must do is stir it every now and then because you're probably gonna add some more stock because the rice kind of absorbs it and then you just add some more. Just keep an eye on it basically, just so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Um, and what happens is because the rice is continually absorbing the kind of saucy flavored stock, it takes on that flavor and it's just a really um, lovely dish. Tastes really, really good. So you mix all that round, have your extra stock, and that will bubble away, then reduce, uh, sorry, then turn your heat down. So it's just a light simmer, stir it every now and then. You can be getting on with whatever you need to get on, but just give it a stir. And then you'll, you'll know when it's cooked anyway, because the rice will be cooked. And if it's not, then just add more stock. But we've, we've weighed it all out for you anyway, but just, you know, common sense. So that's how it um, cooks. I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's been cooked. I need to make a bit of room. And then I will show you the pizza as well. 
Hey. So you're seeing it just a night a, a neat section here, but believe me, <laughs> this is not right. chaos all around. Yeah. And um, by the way, everybody, in case you haven't seen, there's a link in the chat if anybody is enjoying today's session and might like to come to the next one. I yeah, hope so. Be, there's right? a link there for you to um, sign up, which it's on the 10th of May, always at three o'clock, three till four. You can sign up there, save it on your laptop or whatever. And also we've just yeah. put up the link to download the recipe book. Um, that's there too, just in the chat. So do um, click on those. Wow, we'll that looks doing, good. We'll be doing five, sorry, four, maybe five uh, new recipes. Um, in, in three weeks it is in may so this is uh, the jambalaya can you see that it's a bit so it's really yum tasty it's really tasty i like it yeah. right let me get the pizza so we can have a oh lisa somebody is asking could you oven bake the jambalaya or steam it Ooh. oh in the um yes you can same as you would a rice pudding i would definitely think you should try and stir it though uh, okay. a couple of times if you can um but yeah I, I haven't done it but I don't see why not I absolutely okay. just, I don't I, I really don't see why not and Kirsty in the background um three people have said that the chat is disabled oh. is that something we can fix if not if not we'll send you the um the links after today let me try and get the pizza uh, one moment The chat issue should be fixed, everybody, if you want to have a, a check. Oh, lovely. Gosh, nice. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And then um, let me just slide uh, Can we repost the links on the chat for people whose chat was disabled? Is that OK, Kirsty? Please we'll just repost. Um, Lisa, Jenny yes. has asked, um, could you put some of the plant-based sausage in the jambalaya? Oh, yes, nice. you could indeed. <laughs> like that idea, sausage in everything. Yes. No, no. Yes, Jenny, you could put sausage in it as well. Every, all of the recipes you can kind of like interchange if you've got something yeah. or your kids like particular bean or whatever it is, then just go for it. Um, Mandy says that they do all their biryanis, etc., in the oven, and they come out fine. Ah, yeah, biryani yeah, is a I, nice baked dish, isn't it? Yeah, so that would be fine. And if it's easier for you to do it that way, then definitely do it that way. Why not? So this, um, I'm going to put a slice on a plate. And Joyce says that they call it jollof rice. Yeah, we've seen we've seen that quite a bit. That would be a nice thing to. Yeah, sounds good. Lots of similar to... dishes. Oh, yum. Yeah, need to get a slight bit more. Um, excuse me. How am I doing for time, Claire? Um, it's 3.50, so you've got 10 minutes. Ooh, okay. Ah, interesting. Lauren has just asked, is there a set supplier we use when costing the recipes? Um, Lauren, we've been using supermarket prices. So we look at the cheapest prices and we only do it about once a year that we recost everything um, because we lovely, looks delicious. <laughs> if you could just send that over. Thanks. Yes. Um, so you're, depending on uh, your supplier, they may be a bit more expensive or a bit cheaper. We struggle to get actual supplier costs because everybody seems to pay different prices. So that is how we do it. If anybody would like to share their costs, we will happily use those instead. Thank you. So um, whilst I clean this down, would you mind putting up the next poll question, please? Absolutely. Coming right up. So, did you have banana split as a child, is our question. <laughs> Just waiting for the answers. Yes, a classic dish, 89%, 11% have never had banana split. 
Oh. On National Banana Day, we want you to all try the banana split, please. Sorry, I was just had to get some hot water for the thought. No problem. So, this is um, a banana split, which I see we're all familiar with. A classic dish, classic dish. Um, and just really delicious. So, with our desserts, we try to use as much fruit as possible as it's healthier. So with this, you can use mixed berries, you can use, obviously bananas are the style of the show, but you can use um, lots of different, whatever fruit you like, and it can be tinned fruit, frozen fruit. And of course, we will have all the measurements for you. So it's exactly um, how it would be for school food standards. So you've got your banana, slice it down the middle and I think I'm going to halve this again actually because they're quite big and I can go along this way. So uh, um, again, I keep saying it's a simple dish, but it really is a simple dish. But also one that's like yummy. So that's a little bit bruised at the end, so I'll chop that off. And we're using plant yogurt with this. Um, I love plant yogurt, but again, I have it all the time. And it's, uh, you can get plant meal with live cultures. So I'm just going to pour it in. In it goes. And it's just, it's so lovely. It doesn't have like the sourness that a traditional dairy yogurt does. It's very good. Uh, and then I'm going to place my bananas in with a little, a gap in the middle where I'm going to put my berries. Oops. Do have clean hands. So what would a portion for a primary school here be? Would it be one banana or half a banana? Do you know? Do you it remember? depends on the size of the bananas because these are yeah. quite big. But it's, uh, I believe, oh, now you're asking me, it's 55. <laughs> Four tablespoons of berries and 55 grams of fruit. So I'd have to, I'd have to work it out for <laughs> That's you. That's fine. But, but there's several portions there. That's not one portion, folks. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <it's interesting. laughs> yeah. Uh, so for one portion, I'd use probably that much banana, which is half of the bananas. Perfect. Oh, yeah. This is just my portion. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that to one side. Actually, I'm going to put the berries on. I've got fresh strawberries, but again, you can use. Uh, for ease, frozen, frozen fruit, tinned fruit. So this is obviously going to be three portions, which you'd spoon in. So my, uh, the reason I did it like this, you could obviously do it individually, or you can just do a huge tray. It's just a nice kind of bit more desserty way to have lots of fruit, isn't it? And a bit of chocolatiness to go in. Exactly, it's just a mm. lovely, and it feels like a, yeah, it feels like a, a nice treat, a lovely dessert, and yet, you know, we all know we've got some lovely um, fruit here. So, and yes, there is a chocolate sauce, which I should get on with. Got five minutes, so we've got loads of time. Oh, brilliant. If anyone's so, got any more questions or comments, do stick them in the chat or the Q&A, um, so we get a chance to answer those before we finish. Sorry, Lisa, carry on. It's fine. Uh, I've got icing sugar and cocoa powder, and to that I'm going to add um, boiling water. Give that a stir. Obviously the measurements will be in the recipe, but it's the quickest chocolate sauce I think you could ever make, but tastes really good as well. So all you do now is just the, the hot water will dissolve the sugar and melt into the cocoa powder. And when it, um, when it cools down, it thickens as well. So you just, obviously I'm yeah. doing this really carefully because I'll splash it everywhere. So you get you're literally just stirring your um, cocoa powder into your icing sugar. 
and give it a shake. Um, you can make it obviously thicker if you like by using less water. And then I'm just gonna. Wow, that is so yummy looking. <laughs> tried not to spill it, but I did spill it. And then you've got a nice chocolatey, and you only like, you use a tiny bit of the chocolate sauce, but you just, you know, anything with chocolate sauce on you think, mm -mm -mm. yum, treat. Exactly. So I'm just going to um, place the different recipes out and go through them one more time. So we've got the, the pizza, the smoky, um, smoky pizza. Oh, I've forgotten the name, apologies. Smoky sausage pizza. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Banana ketchup curry with Lovely. our brown rice. We've got the jambalaya. Amazing. The beans. And then we've got... Um, a lovely dessert for you, which is a banana split. And in three weeks time, we'll be back with four recipes and completely different recipes. So um, yeah, we haven't decided on them. We've got quite a few to choose from. So I really um, hope you can join us. And also if you have any recipe suggestions, also would love to hear them, you know, what you'd like to see on your menu. Um, and thank you so much for watching. We've just got two more two more questions, Lisa. So Lauren says, how many would that serve? I think that ref probably refers to the banana split. So three. Three so there. Three. I didn't make ten. That's no. so we, we so half a medium banana per child, roughly. Yeah. Perfect. And final one, would you sweeten the yogurt? I don't think you need to. I don't think you need to. Um, I've tried it many times and uh no you don't need to because the bananas are sweet and the chocolate sauce is really sweet as well yeah. you could do but then we'd have to run the, stati the statistics yeah so i can try it with some uh we're garbage. always trying to keep the sugar low in all of our recipes so we try and not add it if we don't absolutely don't have to is there one more just a thank you and an mm, oh. yummy from joyce uh, thank, thank you. you thank you all for coming